In this lecture, we'll discuss a graphical method for solving discrete dynamical systems. But before we do that, let's review other methods we have for solving dynamical systems. One method we have is just to iterate the function. For example, if we had the dynamical system xn plus 1 minus x sub n is 2 times x sub n times 1 minus x sub n, with, let's say, initial condition x naught is 0 0.1, well, we could solve for x sub n plus 1 in terms of x sub n. We add x sub n to both sides, and we obtain 2x sub n, 1 minus x sub n plus x sub n. In other words, x sub n plus 1 is some function f of x sub n, where f of x is 2 times x times 1 minus x plus x. To determine future values of the system, we just take the initial condition and plug it into f, and then take the next result and plug it into f again, etc., etc., and iterate f. Our handy function iteration applet is a quick way to calculate these iterates. Once you've entered the function and the initial conditions, you just need to click iterate to calculate the new values. For example, this shows that x sub 1 is 0 0.28, and calculate x sub 2, etc. very quickly. Here we see that the solution to this dynamical system seems to bounce up and down as time increases. Another approach is to find an analytic solution, which is just a mathematical formula that gives us directly x sub n from the initial condition x naught and the value of the time n. But we can do this only for special cases. For example, if we had the simple system x sub n plus 1 is some number r times the previous value x sub n, we can easily find a formula for the solution and solve it and say that x sub n is equal to the initial condition x naught times the value of this number r to the power of n. We need to multiply x naught by r n times in order to get the solution x sub n. So this is the simple example of exponential growth or decay. Here we're going to focus on the third graphical approach to solving a dynamical system. Let's say we have the dynamical system x sub n plus 1 is some function f of x sub n. The beauty of this graphical approach is that we can do this for any f. We don't even need a formula for f. This approach is based on a graph of the function f. We use x sub n for our horizontal axis and x sub n plus 1 for the vertical axis. We plot the graph of f of x. We can use this graph to estimate the value of x sub n plus 1 for any value of x sub n. This is, after all, what we need to do in order to evolve the dynamical system. Let's imagine we start with the initial conditions over here. This is some value of x naught. If this is x naught, what is the value of f of x naught? Well, we simply look for the value of the function. The height of the graph of the function above x naught gives us f of x naught. And what is f of x naught? Well, according to our equation, that is x sub 1. Now, to calculate x sub 2, we just need to take x sub 1 and put it back into the function. So we need to make x1 be the new input. In other words, we need to put x1 on the horizontal axis to make it be the input. Let's imagine this is the origin. So this is the point where xn is 0 and xn plus 1 is 0. Then this distance right here is just x sub 1. To take x sub 1 from the vertical axis and put it onto the horizontal axis, we just need to find the same distance x sub 1 over here. which means x sub 1 should be right here. Now we're in position to determine what f of x sub 1 is. We just need to look at the graph and find the height of the function of f above x sub 1, and that gives us f of x sub 1, which, according to our formula, 
is the same thing as x sub 2. We can keep going in this way. Now we, x sub 2 is this distance here. We want to move it to the horizontal axis. So maybe it's something like this. This is probably about x sub 2. We can graphically find out what f of x sub 2 is, looking at the height of the function above x sub 2. So this height is approximately f sub x sub 2, which is the same thing as x sub 3. OK, this distance is about x sub 3. So I'm imagining it's something like right here. Plug this into our function. This gives us f of x sub 3, which is the same thing as x sub 4. We can continue in this process to calculate future iterates of the function. In other words, to evolve the dynamical system. Let's try this one more time. But this time we're going to use a shortcut to make the graphical approach be even easier. To make our shortcut, we're going to add one more thing to our graph. We're going to add the diagonal line, the line where xn plus 1 equals x sub n, or the line y equals x if you thought of the vertical axis being y and the horizontal axis being x. To be clear, we'll also label the other curve as the function xn plus 1 equals f of x sub n. OK, let's start with the same initial condition, x0. Again, to find x1, we just need to evaluate the function f, which is the height of the graph of the function. So this height is our x1, which is f of x0. The next step is to take the x1 from the vertical axis and translate it back to the same value in the horizontal axis. Here's where the line xn plus 1 equals x sub n comes in handy. Along every point on the line xn plus 1 equals x sub n, the value of the horizontal coordinate is the same as the value of the vertical coordinate. So if we want to translate from the vertical value x1 to the equivalent horizontal value, all we need to do is move along the horizontal line until we hit the line xn plus 1 equals x sub n. At this point, we're at the coordinates x1, comma x1, so that we know if we move straight down, we would be at the horizontal coordinate of x1. Now to find x sub 2, we just need to move up to the graph of the function. Since f of x1 is x2, this gives us x2 as the vertical coordinate. Again, we can use our line xn plus 1 equals x sub n to translate x sub 2 to the horizontal axis as the point where we hit it is the point x2, x2. To find x3, we evaluate the function at x2, giving us x3 equals f of x2. And we can continue this process. In short, what we need to do is move horizontally to the diagonal, and then vertically up to the graph of the function. Then again, horizontally to the diagonal, and vertically to the graph of the function. Each time we move horizontally and then vertically, we iterate the function. So this is a quick way to evolve our dynamical system. We can see from our graph that x4 is about right here. And here we have x sub 5, x sub 6, and x sub 7. In fact, we can see what would happen if we kept going. We would get closer and closer to this point where the graph of the function intersects the diagonal line. This procedure is called cobwebbing because sometimes these horizontal and vertical line segments can look like a cobweb. 
Cobwebbing is a nice graphical method that allows us to visualize the behavior of the solution to a discrete dynamical system. You can further explore cobwebbing using the cobwebbing applets. Here we've entered the same function from the beginning of the lecture, f of x equals 2x times 1 minus x plus x, with initial condition x0 equals 0 0.1, which is also shown over here. The graph of the function is this blue curve, and the diagonal line is this red line. Remember, for cobwebbing, we need to move vertically to the graph of the function and then horizontally to the diagonal line. Clicking the Step button moves us first up to the graph of the function, computing x1 from x0, shown over here too. Clicking again moves us horizontally to the diagonal, bringing x1 over here. Click again. Now we move vertically to the function, getting x2, horizontally to the diagonal, vertically to function, horizontally to diagonal, vertically to function, horizontal, vertical. Etc. You can combine the horizontal and vertical steps by clearing the details box. Then every time you click iterate, it does both.